Hey Canucks fans, today is all about Alex Burles, so let's relive the night he slayed the dragon. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Tuesday, December the 3rd. Alex Burles will be inducted to the Ring of Honor at Rogers Arena tonight by the Vancouver Canucks. I'll be going to tonight's game with my season ticket buddy Mike. We have been upgraded to a suite which is pretty sweet. I'm very excited about that. So my son, Sean, and his girlfriend, Fernando, will be sitting in our seats. Very excited about the game. I can't wait. Been looking forward to this game ever since they announced it way back in June at the draft, almost uh, five and a half months ago now. But today, I want to talk about Alex Burrows. I don't want to talk about line matchups and line combos and all that kind of stuff. Today, I want to talk about Alex Burrows. And in particular, I want to relive the night that he slayed the dragon. Now, if you saw, if you're a subscriber of The Athletic, you may have seen it on social media already. Thomas Drance wrote an awesome, awesome oral history of that goal, that night in particular. And he interviewed 16 former players, coaches, and sportscasters. So he got to Burles, Kessler, Daniel, Henrik, Roberto Luongo, Corey Schneider, Kevin Bieksa, um, El Vigno, the coach at the time. He talked to uh, Patrick Kane, Patrick Sharp, uh, Jonathan Taves. And even Chris Campoli, the guy, who, the defenseman who gave away the puck on that famous goal. Talked to John Shorthouse as well and a couple other guys. So, a wonderful, wonderful read. If you're a subscriber to The Athletic, make sure you check it out if you haven't already. It is awesome. I want to give you an oral history of that game that night from a fan's perspective. Because that was actually the first year that I was a season ticket holder. I came in that summer um, for the 2010-2011 season. So I want to tell you about that game. And for the newer Canucks fans, younger Canucks fans, Canucks fans that weren't around back then, and you may have seen the highlights or you may have just been starting to get in the game, it's really, really important to remember the context of that game, of why that game holds such significance. Not Yeah, sure, not only did it propel us to the second round of the playoffs, but you got to remember, the Chicago Blackhawks were our kryptonite. We could not beat them. They ousted us from two straight playoff rounds, uh, two straight playoff years, 2009-2010. Both of them in the in the second round. And they were basically the team that we, they are the hump that we could not get over. And we knew it, fans knew it, even some players knew it. They, they didn't even want to face them in the first round. Not afraid of them, but, you know, why face them in the first round when you can, especially when the Canucks are coming off a President's Trophy winning season, the best season in their history, and Chicago had to sneak into the playoffs in the very last day of the season. And then what's the Canucks reward? Oh, great. They get to play against the team that's knocked them off the previous two years. So there's already that. The Canucks go out to a 3 nothing lead, two wins in Vancouver, one win in Chicago. Then Chicago rattles off the next three. So now it's 3-3. And it was crazy because um, Roberto Luongo, Luongo was pulled in game five in Vancouver. Then Corey Schneider replaced him. Corey Schneider starts game six. So you go away from Luongo. He starts game six, but then gets pulled in the third period in game six because he got injured and the Wongo had to come in, Chicago ends up winning game six in overtime. So now they're coming back to Vancouver. The Canucks are freaking out. The fans are freaking out. Roberto Luongo, uh, we don't know how confident he is going to game seven. And here we are. Now, Alex Burrows had a game for the ages. Not just because he has the game winning goal, but because he had a, the, the craziest up and down game I can think of in a big game. So let's go through the game really quickly. Of course, the crowd's crazy, anticipation, nervousness, excitement, all these things. And then, you know, it was a good back and forth battle and not a lot of scoring to start off. And then it was, it was uh, you know, Corey Crawford playing against uh, Roberto Luongo. And it was, uh, you know, it was a good, it was a good, both goal, goalies playing very well. And then Alex Burrows opens the scoring on a nice play from, from his line mates, Ryan Kessler and, and Mason Raymond. So it's one nothing for the Canucks. All good. Then the crazy third period. So this is how the crazy third period starts. First, um, Duncan Keith takes a hooking penalty on Alex Burrows. So the Canucks are up one nothing, And Burrows gets a penalty shot out of it, actually. So imagine Burrows being able to bury the Blackhawks with a, with a penalty shot goal um, uh, just a couple minutes into the third period. Burrows misses it. He actually called it one of his, maybe his worst attempt uh, of his career. So it's still one nothing. Play goes on, game goes on, game goes on. Fine, 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 fine. Still a defensive battle, only one nothing. Then with three minutes left, Keith hooks Burles again for another hooking penalty. 
So now you're thinking, okay, the Canucks are up one nothing. They have a power play with three minutes to go. Let's not mess it up. El Vigno in Thomas Durant's piece even said he put out two demon instead of the usual four forwards and one demon just to protect that one goal lead. And then the unthinkable happens. Brent Seabrook actually strips, poke checks Alex Burles off the puck. The puck goes through the neutral zone, and then Marion Hosa gets a shot on Luongo. And then remember, this is shorthanded, Chicago shorthanded here. And then Jonathan Taze with a, a, a really heroic effort from his back, his side, he was falling down. He was able to poke the puck past Luongo with a minute 56 left. And now it's a 1 1 game. And remember, that was a shorthanded goal, completely against the flow of the play. So not, so far, Burroughs has scored the opening goal. He missed a penalty shot. Now he was the one that was stripped of the puck that led to the game-tying goal. The game ends, uh, regulation ends at 1-1. My buddy Mike and I, my season ticket partner Mike, I remember this. We've, talk, we've joked about this. We did not say a single thing. Well, basically, we were quiet for the whole 17-minute intermission between regulation and overtime. We sat there. I was on the left seat number one. He was on the right seat number two. Or actually, maybe we were in different seats back then. But we didn't say a word. I think the only thing I said to him was, you're a right man? And he goes, uh, I'm not sure. The whole arena was a weird... It wasn't silent because it wasn't like it was 19,000 people being quiet. But it was a, an eerie buzz, almost like... Did you just see what I see? Is it, are we going to really blow this after being up 3 nothing? President's Trophy, all these things? It was a really, really weird feeling. It wasn't silent, but it was weird. And then the overtime started. Just 24 seconds into overtime. You know, I was telling you that um, Duncan Keith kept getting penalties on Alex Burles. Well, then Burles gets a penalty on Keith for holding. And now Burles is in the penalty box. 24 seconds into overtime in a game seven. You guys remember, then that, there's that Jonathan Taze cross-ice pass, cross-crease pass to Patrick Sharp. Sharp didn't fan on it, but he didn't get all of it because I know Sharp, I've seen Sharp shoot way better than that. But he gets a pretty good one-timer off. Luongo slides across the crease, left to right, gets it with his right side of the uh, body, and the Canucks are still in the game. Imagine if the game ended there with Burles in the penalty box. Crazy. Later on... In the period, we know the game-winning goal. Chris Campoli tries to put it up the boards, um, up the glass. Burles knocks it down. The puck's rolling, bouncing, and he's able to slap it past Corey, Corey Crawford into the net. The Canucks, Alex Burles slays the dragon. The Canucks pour off the bench, mob him, maul him, gang tackle him, dogpile him, and the Canucks are off to the second round. And we know the rest is history. There are a couple of things. I wrote a blog about this when I was writing for Daily Hive uh, a few a couple of years ago, and uh, a couple of other things. That if you watch the highlights, that really stand out on that on that play is uh, obviously Burroughs makes a really nice play at the line. Another thing you'll see is is Mason Raymond um, as he's making a line change. He, he worked really hard to stay on side. He had to. He was basically in the zone. He had to pop out of the zone. Basically, just walk the blue line to make sure that he wasn't offside going into you know heading towards the bench and of course uh, another thing to notice is is uh, and actually another thing to notice is Jonathan Taze who's usually very very sturdy you know and he was one of the best players in the league back then um, I think he had an uncharacteristic spill I think it was along the boards or in the, or, or in the middle that that opened up some ice so not only did he fall Campoli does the turnover Mason Raymond has to make sure he stays on side and then Burroughs puts the puck past Corey Crawford Wow! Obviously, we were elated in the fa in the stands. We were screaming, we were crying, we were we were cheering, we were laughing, we were hugging, we were high fiving. Um, we were almost falling over the the railing, whatever it may be. But of course, that was the the goal that launched the Canucks to then a relatively easy second round win over Nashville, and that third round win over San Jose, and then of course the Game Seven loss to Boston. But for this Game Seven. It was truly an amazing moment to be in the arena. And you look at Alex Burrell's night. Like I said, it was an up and down night. And when you look at it, he had the two goals for the Canucks, right? The game, uh, the opening goal and the game winning goal. He drew two penalties from Duncan Keith. One of them where he missed a penalty shot, and one of them where he, the, you know, the Blackhawks scored shorthanded on it. On that shorthanded goal, he Burrell's was the one who got stripped of the puck to lead to that that odd man rush. And then in, in overtime, Burroughs takes a penalty 24 seconds in. And instead of being the hero, he could have easily been the GOAT. But no, he's a different GOAT. He's not the greatest of all time, but he's certainly one of the best of all time. That's why he's going up in the, in the ring of honor today. And I cannot wait to be there. So I'm not sure if I'm going to venture down out of the suite, you know, during intermission. So if you're at the game, maybe I'll run into you in the, in the concourse, either in the, you know, before the game or after the game. 
But uh, for anyone who's going, I really, really hope that you have an awesome time tonight. And if you're watching on TV, I hope you enjoy the festivities. And it's all for Alex Burroughs, well, you know, one of the hardest working, uh, unsung heroes, one of, the, one of the best community guys, all these things. Uh, you know, he's a, team that, a guy that you love to have on your team, a guy that uh, you hated to play against. But tonight it'll be all about the good things, and one of the probably his most memorable good thing was the the night that he slayed the dragon and exorcised the demons of the Chicago Blackhawks. Okay, Canucks fans, that was my oral history. That was all from memory of me being there that night back in I guess it would be in the the middle of April of 2011. What do you remember about that game? Were you there? Were you watching on TV? Were you watching at a pub? Tell me your recollection of the game. Do you remember all that crazy stuff that happened? His first goal, the penalty shot, the, the him getting stripped, the overtime, uh, the penalty, uh, stripped of the puck that is, uh, his, his penalty in overtime, and of course the game winning goal. Tell me what you remember about that. Where were you and what were your reactions? Tell me what else you remember about the game. And of course, if you want to throw in an, another Alex Burrell's memory or two in the comment section, I would love to read that as well. React and reply as always. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you brought back memories and I cannot wait to celebrate with my fellow Canucks fans Alex Burroughs going into the Ring of Honor tonight as the Canucks host the Ottawa Senators. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. God bless. Go Canucks go.